line, the way to tackle the lack of move for contracts. If you're here today, I don't need to convince you that contracts are not helping us moving forward, right? We all agree on that. That's why you came today. And that's why some of you are going to be here tomorrow as well. But then there might be something that might surprise you. It's the reason why contracts are not moving forward is not because they're too complex, it's not because they're too long, and it's not because they're too technical. Really believe me, this is not the issue we have here. This is just the tip of the iceberg of a much bigger issue that we're going to tackle tomorrow. And this issue is our mindset. We are designing contracts with an adversarial mindset that is not supporting the relationship and that is not maximizing results. This mindset is leading us to failure. This is the brutal, honest truth. This is why you're here today, and this is why I'm going to be telling you about the potential of legal design in order to shift the mindset with the technology and mostly with the methodology. Because of that mindset, we end up spending too much time and energy negotiating terms in contracts that are not really supporting the achievement of outcomes. And this is not me saying it, this is actually research by team and a CCM uh, that has done some incredible research. And you might be aware, if you are maybe from a common law jurisdiction, raise your hand. Are there anyone from common law jurisdiction? No, common law, no, North America, knowledgeable with North America. I think you are knowledgeable of North America. So what is, according to your experience, the most negotiated terms uh, when it comes to negotiating contracts in the North American context? Oh, on the spot, huh? Yeah, on the spot. <laughs> well, I am, uh, let me rephrase the question. You, what kind of terms would be? Yeah, most negotiated, most uh, important. I mean, I don't know. I am on the spot here. What do you think? Liability. 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 Uh, risk, risk enforcement and that. Risk, yeah. risk assessments, exactly, that's correct. That's exactly what the research has been uh, indicating. For North America, we spend too much time negotiating uh, risk. Whose risk is going to be? And by doing so, we miss the opportunity to discuss about what, about how can we collaborate to not fall into those risky situations. In a continental Europe, what do you think is the most negotiated terms in contract? It's very similar, it's responsibilities. Responsibilities and intent, because we are, I'm also European, although I live in Canada. Uh, we are thinkers uh, in Europe, we like to think about, so we also want to discuss about the intent. Why are we entering into this contractual relationship? What is our intent? And in North America, we go into action, so we take a lot of action. We don't really think that much. We just go into action, <laughs> but then we're like, oh my god, we need to mitigate the risk, so let's, let's, let's have a good close to, to mitigate the risk. Uh, and in the Arabic world, you might be aware that its uh, most negotiated terms is financial, financial issues, costs, indemnities. So all that to say, this, is, this, this time we are spending is not helping us maximize the results. So what do we need to do? We need to shift our mindset. And we need to use the opportunity from the digital world in order to maximize success. And to, meet, to, and, and to stop thinking about what could come worse but start imagining what can be great. Has any of you ever negotiated a contract? And once you have negotiated a contract, you did like, yeah! Has it happened to you? A few times. But most of the time, what you would do is... True, correct. We need to change that. We need to change that with design thinking. Design thinking is the methodology you need to start using. Why? because it places your user at the center of innovation. We start developing technology without even asking our users what they need. Without even asking ourselves what do we need. What are the problems we want to address? What are the desires that we want to, uh, to, to reach? And design thinking is a user-centric methodology that is helping you develop innovative solutions. How does it work? First, you have to clarify the problem. What are the problems that you are experiencing when you design contracts, when you draft contracts, when you negotiate contracts, when you implement contracts? What are the pain points? But also, what are your desires? Once you have clarified the situation, you can start ideation. This is where creativity comes handy. 
Because then you can start imagining new solutions. Do not limit yourself. It's easier to tame a wild idea than to make a traditional idea go a little wild. So you have not to limit yourself. But once you have enough ideas on the table, you can start identifying the most promising ideas to solve your challenge. Then you go into the development phase, and finally you implement the solution. Always testing and going back to the first step. This solution is helping us, is it helping us uh, finding a solution to our problem or not? And then you have a constant feedback and it's a, a process that is uh, feeding you with data and information in order to make sure that the innovation that you do actually works and gets results. But then I told you, you need, you need also a different kind of thinking. So now we have a methodology, but we also need a new kind of thinking. And this is creative thinking. Why do we need creative thinking? Because the problem we have created, we have created ourselves with our own traditional linear thinking. We cannot solve a problem we have created ourselves by using the same kind of thinking. This is why we need creative thinking. Creative thinking is about finding novel solutions. Solutions that are not just new, but also relevant. So it's also about finding the, uh, the, the solutions that are appropriate to solve your problem. This is just a very straightforward example of what you can do when you, you come with creative thinking. We, we move from the first contract to your left, uh, that is very long and complex and almost useless, to something that is much more attractive to the user, uh, with a design that actually fits on the phone, uh, and we, which is very similar to maybe, uh, maybe we have users of Apple Music in the room or, or Spotify, doesn't it look like a little bit like this? Yeah. And this is what we are used to, to use now. Every day we use those tools. And why contracts should not use the same uh, attractiveness? Do you see um, any other difference uh, except for the, for the visual, for the design? Do you see any other difference between those two kinds of uh, contracts? It's simplified. Simplified? Yes, and it, it's more, uh, actually it talks more to the reader rather than looking at it from a legal perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's more the layman's term. Yes, so easier for the reader to understand. The other major difference is that the contract over there is just text. Mm -hmm. This is not something that you can program. You cannot extract any data from this first contract. However, here this is all programmed. This means you can collect the data Instantly, you can use the data, you can analyze the data, and then you can improve your solution. This is the major difference between the old contract and the new contract. And this is why you need technology. <coughs> technology to scale exponentially your new redesigned contract by leveraging technology in a way that is going to help you assess instantly the outcomes of your contractual relationships and, and act instead of react. So you act to prevent and to maximize success instead of reacting once you have a problem to try to mitigate and put the risk in uh, to the other person. Exponential thinking is taking you to some really, really unexpected growth. Linear thinking teaches us that with one, with one unit of resource, I can get one unit of outcome. All right? Exponential thinking teaches us that with one single unit of resource, I can get 36 units of outcome. With the same amount of energy, I can get 36 times more results. Really, this is true, and this is because we are leveraging the potential of technology. So I hope uh, many of you will join me tomorrow for this contract redesign sprint. Just so you know what we, we're going to be doing, and for those who, who cannot uh, join us, well, you have a little uh, insight as to what we'll be doing tomorrow. We'll be um, having the sprint together where we'll be streamlining flows. So instead of uh, focusing on uh, uh, all those risks, we'll be focusing on how can we make contract work. We'll also be working on how contracts can uh, help us get data, how can we collect data, extract the data, analyze the data, and use the data in order to support the relationship. And of course, all of this is going to simplify the communication between uh, contracting partners.
Just to finish, six quick steps for those of you who cannot attend tomorrow. At least you will get um, a little bit of insight as to the legal design methodology in six steps. First, you have to know who are your users. Who are your clients? <coughs> what do they want? What are their pain points? What are their desires? We need to ask them. We even need to ask who are our, our users. It might, it might be the case that you have multiple users and they have different needs and desires. Then you review the data. Once you have the data, you can start from the customer and design your contract backwards. It's not about start, starting from the legal framework and then designing the contract. As Amazon CEO say, we start with the customer and then we design the product backwards. So that's what we need to do. We need to reverse engineer and then we can imagine a new legal experience, a new contractual experience. You develop an interface, you prototype, you use ideally some uh, um, digitalization so you can start uh, implementing at the end technology in the back end. So technology really comes at the end. Otherwise, what happens? We are at risk of developing technology that is not going to be used by our users. And then we're wasting our time, our money, our energy on building something that is not going to be used, that is not going to be appropriate, that is not going to be relevant. This is why technology only comes at the end of the process. So that's all for today. Legal design is really that simple. You need a methodology, different kind of thinking, and at the end, technology. And when you have that, you can customize new contracts designed especially for your needs and then scale them across uh, different segments of your clientele. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>